Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi. Now today we're going to take a look at restoring a vintage 1970s Clawtron from the Fisher Price Adventure People line. Now if you collect these figures, and I've been picking them up for a long time now, they're always pretty beaten and worn. That's because they are toys designed to be played with and played with a lot. But one figure that's generally pretty hard to find in a good condition is Clawtron. Now Clawtron should have this little uh, decal on the front of him which is printed on in a few colours and shows some little workings and the electronic bits but more often than not when you find him he looks like this. The whole thing has worn off. It's just because of the way uh, this uh, decal was applied. It uh, tends to easily sort of wear and because when you're playing with it as a child you sort of hold the figures and rub them around and so the uh, decal just comes away and you can see that this one here has the same sort of problem as just a tiny little bit of it left. In fact the only way to get a good version of Clawtron with the decal is to find a carded version and here we can see exactly what it should look like. So it's a grey plate with a few sort of yellow dots and some black detailing on it and that's what we're going to restore today along with some other little bits of the paintwork. Now the figure really has quite a simple paint job apart from that, some blue pits sort of down the arms and the legs, the hands are silver as are the boots and a little bit on the side of the legs and then the sort of visor part of the helmet is also silver. Now on pretty much all the figures I've got the blue parts aren't uh, damaged at all, they just get some tiny little bits of wear so I'm not actually going to bother doing those bits today but I will repair the silver on all of these and we'll sort out the decal. So the first thing we're going to do is sort out the silver paint on uh, this figure. For the silver paint on Claudron we are just going to use a paint pen and this is a uni paint uh, marker and it comes in silver. You can also buy versions of this uh, like Edding. This is an Edding 780. Again a sort of silver coloured uh, paint and this should match really nicely. I've uh, used these before on some uh, Masters of the Universe figures and they work very nicely and I think that should match this uh, sort of silver paint because it's very similar to the Masters of the Universe silver paint. If you wanted to go a bit fancy and make this look like chrome then of course you could use the uh, Molotow liquid chrome pens but I want to try and make this look original so we're going to be using this one today. You have to shake the pens very well make sure they're fully mixed up because uh, the paint doesn't tend to set if you don't mix them up uh, fully so give them a really good shake and we can just start uh, working on this figure and uh, carefully sort of colouring in the damaged silver. So let's do a little bit on his hand here and now the hands are always very worn on these because uh, they see a lot of sort of damage from uh, being chewed and just generally rubbed against different surfaces but you can see just by applying a little bit of paint to that already that's looking quite a lot nicer. So I'll just get this one hand done and then we can start doing some other parts on him. So there you can see that's one hand done. There are some areas that are a little bit awkward to get into but actually a lot of the time the paint wasn't on there originally like sort of inside the claws but you can sort of just about get the paint in there with this uh, size nib. I think this is a one millimetre nib. Um, so it just takes a little bit of uh, persuasion to get the paint down there, but it will go, it will go in. But you can see that does make quite a nice difference to the claws on Claudron. It now looks like it's almost new. So we're going to do all of the silver bits. I've got to do both hands. We'll do the boots, the little bits on the sides and even the visor. And then once that's done we can start looking at uh, doing the decal. So let's get the rest of this guy repainted using the uh, silver paint pen. So after about 10 minutes I've got all of the silver bits now painted and uh, hopefully I think I've not missed any areas. I'm going to let this dry for a couple of hours because as with all painting it's best to let it dry for as long as you possibly can. And with these silver paints a couple of hours should uh, allow it to sort of set quite nicely and if I've missed any pieces I will sort of go over those again but as far as I can tell all of the silver bits have done he's already looking a lot better. Now that the first lot of paints has had time to dry I'm also going to paint this front panel silver using the same pens. In fact I'm just going to use the Edding pen this time because uh, my uni paint has started to run out so I'm going to 
to use this it's the same sort of silver uh, because I want to make a sticker one version of the sticker that will work over the top of the silver and another version of the sticker that will just stick on to a plain surface like this one where it's just going to be left black so uh, let's get the uh, front panel silvered up and then I'll start work on the sticker so again same process get the pen I've already given this a good shake and I can now color this in and make sure it's a nice even sort of shade of silver to match the rest of the figure So while we wait for that panel to dry, I'm going to go into Photoshop and uh, make a recreation of the front decal for this figure. Uh, as I say, one version which will work on this silver and one version that will work without a silver background. So let's get that made. I created two versions of the decal, uh, one that you can print onto sticky backed glossy printer paper and this is a sort of the normal stuff I'd use for other decals and that has this grey background because that means that when you stick it onto the toy you'll get a grey background on the toy and it will cover anything that's sort of left there. But the other version is the one that I'm really sort of interested to use and that is the white version, the one that on the right hand side because uh, if I put white in an image it doesn't get printed. So this is printed onto clear sticky backed acetate sheet so uh, when the I take this off the backing it will actually be clear and that's the one I want to stick onto the silvered version that I've got here and I think that should look quite nicely so let's get these added to the toys the first thing obviously is we've got to cut these out so I've got a pair of scissors here you'll notice I put a grey line around it so that you can actually see where you need to cut uh, and that's just the guy so you can cut right up and remove the grey line we don't actually need that part of it I'm just going to cut this out nice and neatly and I've put this file available on uh, toypolloy.com so if you want to do this to your own toys 
then you can just go there and download it and this file is available for free so uh, feel free to update your figures and make them look uh, like they should have done back when you first had them. So there's the sticker, I'm just going to get a pair of tweezers. I'll cut this other one out as well and we can apply them both to the toys. Sometimes the backings are very well stuck on, which is why I always have a pair of tweezers to hand. There we go. So that's the new sticker and we'll stick it on this guy on the right. That actually works really nicely. I wasn't quite sure how well that would uh, sort of fit, but uh, that does look pretty good. That's got a nice result. And the grey sort of matches with the silver. Now for the other one, this is the one that I've got really high hopes for. So this is printed onto clear acetate sheets, but they are sticky back. So you again just have to remove the backing. There you go, you can see it's all clear. And we can stick this onto the toy. That's given quite a nice result actually. It's not quite as vibrant as the original one, but that's uh, pretty good. So here we have the three finished versions of Clawtron. This one on the left is the one using the silver paint and then the acetate uh, clear sticker over the top. I actually quite like the end result on that one. It works very nicely. You can see you get a little bit of a shine from the silver. The yellow may be not quite as vibrant as it should be, but that is because uh, with the sort of acetate and the way my printer works, uh, it's not really come out as strong as I'd hoped. My printer is designed to print onto a white surface, so it's not perfect, but I do quite like the finish on that and the black little uh, emblems work very nicely. Uh, and then this version on the right is the one on the uh, white sticker paper. So this is uh, just sticky backed, uh, glossy printer paper. And you can see that uh, the yellow is much brighter on that because that's how my printer wants to work. And that again actually looks quite nice. If we compare it to the one in the middle, which is the original one, they do uh, all sort of look pretty good. I think this one on the left is probably slightly closer to that original finish just because it's sort of shiny and silvery. So if you want to restore your own Clawtron, then uh, this file, as I say, is available for free on toyploy.com. So go there, download it and uh, have a go yourself at restoring a Clawtron. This figure is fairly straightforward and fairly easy to find. It's not a sort of hard to find figure. So uh, you'll find plenty of them when you're rummaging around at toy fairs and they generally only cost a pound or so. I don't think I paid much more than a pound for any any of these figures and the cardboard one didn't cost me much more so it's certainly a very easy figure to find but it's worth doing a little bit of restoration on it because uh, without the sticker on the front it just looks a bit plain so i hope this video has been of interest to you and thanks for watching thanks for watching toy ploy subscribe for more great videos you can also follow toy ploy on twitter facebook and instagram